sorry to uh, to uh, about halal meat and poultry yeah because in korea they have the industry they have the meat industry they have the poultry industry unfortunately they do not know about halal and when they know that the uh, australia new zealand are leading countries in producing halal meat they would like to follow the st step of australia new zealand and this is the only reason why they invited me and now that the policy uh, they, they write the policy on the production of halal meat and and poultry and we will see inshallah in, in very very near future that korea will become a major producer of halal products a uh, two days later in 2000 into 27 april 2018 i was invited to dong ai university dong ai university is the most uh, the, the largest uh, private university in in south korea located in busan and uh, what surprised me at the time was that they already offered master's program mba program in the field of muslim friendly hospitality and tourism so they already offered the program of wisata sharia in indonesia so and whereby at that time as long as my concern i didn't see a university in indonesia offering such program similarly to cosmetics in in Korea, there, there are more than 2,000, 2000 factories of cosmetics. And then they are now uh, requested, not requested, encouraged by the government to, uh, to, to enter the halal industry. So one of our tasks now in the International Institute for Halal Research and Training in Malaysia, that uh, is that to lead to help them to make the product become halal so uh, before covid every uh, two months our team will go to korea visited uh, cosmetic and personal care factories teach them what's halal replace uh, non-halal item for example non-halal ingredients and then to make the products uh, halal. So this is our uh, task, and then we have our branch in, in, in South Korea. Um, ladies and gentlemen, there are three main issues in halal products. Number one is raw materials. And number two is processing. And number three is authentication. And then I see that this is a very, very uh, close uh, to the role of the universities. I'm very proud that uh, this, this uh, seminar is conducted by University of Darussalam, UNIDA, Gontor, where hopefully uh, the participants of my, my lecture this morning can see that what the area that they can do research on. We know that in halal, uh, the concept is very, very clear. It must be halal from A to Z, from source of origin to storage and distribution, from farm to plant. But as a scientist, we also know that in every step of this, there is a potential for non-halal contamination. Starting from the, the slaughtering, for example, some are just ignore the, the SOP of, of, of uh, Islamic slaughtering. Yeah. Similarly to processing, some of cross contamination happen. From our own experience uh, visiting and do auditing uh, of halal in various factories, sometimes they did not know or sometimes they just ignore. Yeah. And then in terms of ingredients, additively similar things happen, yeah, and then about, uh, uh, I will show you in the uh, 
the next slide that um, out of 100 uh, food ingredients additive for example and most of them are very very critical to us there is a potential to be halal or non-halal and we go to packaging in summer packaging need a layer of fat to to inhibit the touch between the the, uh, the the packaging material and the food and when it goes to fat and then there is a potent, potential to be contaminated by by non-halal fats storage is also very common that we see that the, some storage are used to to uh, to keep their yeah, halal and non-halal food in one place the transportation and goes to storage and distribution. This is uh, some critical areas, uh, critical uh, areas in, in the ingredients. I would highlight about uh, the P and is by products, including pork, lard, and gelatin, where a lot, uh, this is um, among the biggest uh, contamination in halal industry. Gelatin is used everywhere from food, pharmaceuticals and also uh, uh, cosmetics. And, and about 90% of the gelatin in the world market is not halal. Similarly, enzyme, rennet, for example, pepsin. Rennet is derived from the intestine of cows. But since the, there is a competition between uh, uh, enzyme production and meat production and then some alternative are in the market at the moment including from pig. Pepsin mostly from pig. And then also emulsifiers, more and diglycerin because uh, fat or oils from uh, pig is very cheap and then uh, most of them are derived from, from that, yeah, from that animal. This is some chart that I got from the internet. And then even the hair of this animal, the pig animal, can be a produce, can be used to produce cysteine. You know, cysteine is a one of the amino acid that is used in that industry, a bakery industry. Of course, uh, apart from uh, as a raw material for toothbrush, or brush or for painting, a brush for cosmetic, etc. That's why uh, the R&D for halal authentic authentication is very, very important. This is what we have done in last uh, few years, FTIR, Fourier transfer infrared spectroscopy, electronic nose, uh, differential scanning calorimetry, molecular uh, biology, uh, chromatography, biopotential telemetry, etc. In terms of gelatin, for example, I did uh, one uh, uh, research and survey that Indonesia import a lot, yeah? It's uh, 100,000 uh, kilograms say, a year with 272 billion rupiah. While Indonesia do not have any big gelatin company yet. Yeah, yes, we know that in, in, in industry, gelatin is considered super ingredient that can uh, function various properties, emulsifier, thickening materials, you know, and then and, and also as uh, as uh, to to uh, to be used in various uh, industries, yeah, like cosmetics and and and, and pharmaceuticals. In pharmaceuticals, about 65% of the heart capsule must be from gelatin. So in one heart capsule, 65% must be gelatin. Uh, and then um, I'm proud to mention here that uh, we just released a book, yeah, and we wrote together uh, with a few other scholars, and then uh, published by uh, Committee National Economy and Kewangan Syariah. And then this, the book uh, showed that the potential of Indonesia to uh, uh, produce uh, various uh, food ingredients yet to replace imported ones at the moment. 
So what the ingredient we listed in this book, but uh, are basically imported by Indonesia in large quantities, such as gelatin flavors, oleoresin, seasonings, enzyme, food colorants, antioxidants, emulsifier, anti-forming agent, anti-caking agent, humectant and glazing agent. So those uh, uh, ingredients are basically very, very possible uh, to be produced in Indonesia because we have uh, we have potential, we have a raw materials, and then we in this book we we also mention the location where to find alternative for gelatin, for support for flavors, for alloracin, etc. <coughs> This is the challenges for compliance to halal and the quality requirement. To comply with halal requirement, more stringent auditing and monitoring system is needed by halal authorities. And in order to help the halal authorities, uh, the role of the university, such as uh, UNIDA, is very, very important. We need to help the halal industry. Uh, through the research uh, um, and innovation that we can we can do. In the next few slides, I will show you some of the examples of the research that we have conducted. This is uh, what uh, we how we do the analysis of a lot of contamination by using Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. Uh, the good things about FTR is that uh, the uh, the, the result can be obtained within one minute. It's very, very fast without having time for us to prepare the sample. I mean, whatever the sample that we have, we can be directly uh, using for, for halal authentication using infrared. And then most typical, the most important thing here is that how to interpret the the spectrum, yeah. Here, for example, in this uh, wave number 960 to 970, you can see the different of, of uh, concentration of lot. Yeah, different concentration of lot. So meaning that this wave number area can be taken as the signature. And then after that, we use uh, further analysis using the software to differentiate between halal and non-halal. Uh, uh, products. Another thing is that another uh, research that we conducted is using electronic nose. Electronic nose is the machine that works best on the volatile compound. Yeah, we can use this because we believe that the non-halal meat, non-halal lard, or non-halal fat on oil, such as lard, the smell is totally different from the halal one. Okay. And then we do this, and then this is the result. Yeah, this is based on the volatile compound. What the volatile compound that contribute to that smell. So this is what we do. So in this study, we have to identify the, the contributing elements of, of the smell. And then we trap that, and then we analyze. So, when, but I suddenly out. It, it can you, you see the my slide? Yeah, I think uh, you need to uh, reshare your slide once more. Need. Yeah. So my slide is still there, uh, doctor. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I cannot see the slide. Uh, I think it's a good idea if you uh, stop this share screen and maybe try to share the screen once more. Okay, I, I, okay, I know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's working perfectly now. Thank you. You see now? Yes, it's working perfectly. We can hear it. We can see it clearly, thank you, thank vividly. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor.
and then in terms of molecular biology techniques uh, we use uh, some enzymatic uh, uh, methods or uh, method using PCR molecular biology for example we can differentiate using PCR uh, the pork and uh, uh, chicken we differentiate with chicken beef and and other animal source and we see here pork we can get a spectrum increase here, here. and then this is uh, how we differentiate between the concentration of a pork yeah and this is based on the dna uh, there is one interesting uh, research that we conducted with Saudi uh, King Saudi University in Riyadh, where uh, we conducted research and survey. Actually, we identified uh, the uh, snacks product for kids for children in in Riyadh, and then uh, we know that Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia mostly they import the products, food products, and then uh, we identify the uh, we extract the DNA of the food of the food and then we identify the the type of dna unfortunately about 17 to 18 percent we discovered uh dna from pig so if if we do the same uh, uh, research in indonesia we do not know yeah we are the randomly we identify we take food in the market and then we check the dna of the food yeah and then how much uh, dna uh, of 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 uh peak here in the food and then our paper published in the food control of course we do not mention the country yeah this is uh, the the uh, dse differential scanning calorimetry the same thing we can differentiate uh, halal and non-halal using this and then the common uh, critical ingredient in pharmaceuticals um, uh, among them are placenta from human and animal in one place i found that it is derived from pig and we know that placenta is very very much used in uh, cosmetics and, and skincare products because it is believed as the most powerful anti-aging and then lab gelatin and collagen and then our emulsifier and that's why the research on production of gelatin is uh, very very important and then i urge uh, you need uh, of course the relevant uh, faculty pharmacy for example uh, agriculture if any uh, uh, to do research on gelatin Gen uh, in, in my uh, own experience we have conducted at least 10 projects related on gelatin uh, the latest one is I collaborated with Universitas Indonesia in Jakarta to produce a gelatin for pharmaceutical capsule from Kambing et Awah here yeah, from Jawa Barat and with the King South University in Saudi Arabia, we conducted study on camel gelatin project. Inshallah, the, the factory of the project uh, gelatin uh, will be established in Jeddah. Inshallah. This is what we have done in Kulia of Dentistry, Faculty of Dentistry. We, whereby we see that some of material may uh, contain non halal, yeah, like porcelain is non halal. This is a workshop conducted in um, halal gelatin in, in Saudi Arabia. We work together with King, King Sa Saudi University and also uh, Saudi Food and Drug Authority, yeah, both located in Riyadh. Uh, in Malaysia, uh, the same scenario happened where we need um, the gelatin, but we do not have the factory. The yeah, UMP in the Malaysia Pahang, for example, will produce the gelatin uh, from uh, starting uh, next year. Yeah. This is our laboratory. We have a pilot plant of gelatin and derivative in Malaysia. And these three are my former students. Yeah. This is our halal research laboratory. Okay, and then this all this, this uh, instrument that we have in our laboratory. 
ladies and gentlemen, uh, when we talk about the halal research, we have to follow the trends. Why? Because in the next 10, 20, 30 years ahead, this is the trend that will be important. Yeah. And this is based on the uh, trend in terms of the patent file in the International Patent Agency. Yeah. Number one is data science. Yeah, AI, data science, and uh, the uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain, etc., are there already, and then it should be included into halal research. At least these three points uh, need to be addressed by our researchers in Indonesia by our universities in Indonesia. Number one is data science. Number two, devices for rapid test. And number three is halal authentication of products in digital uh, platform. This is the trend to yeah. And then it could be a multidisciplinary research. For example, uh, people from faculty of pharmacy work together with the IT people, with economics, with the people from economics, with the people from the, the engineering, etc. Yeah, it cannot be, you cannot stand alone because uh, research need uh, uh, collaborations, yeah? Nobody can do everything alone. And this is the role of expectation of the university in the 21st century. Uh, the main concern now is how can we solve the problem of the people? And since Yudha is an Islamic university, and then what the concern is what and how we solve the problem of the Ummah. And halal industry is one of the problems. And then for the beginning, please check our roles now. And then in Unida, for example. And then the, you see, we can see here, unfortunately I don't have data for Indonesia. Um, this is the data that showed that how big the impact of the research of the university. What we want actually is the blue color. Blue color means business enterprises, where your research is already linked to business and enterprises. If it's still there, uh, it's still in the yellow, uh, sorry, in the green stack, meaning that your research is still uh, supported by the government, funded by the government, and then no action after that. And non-profit, for example. If it's already read, and then you're still working in the university for publication only. Yeah. What we need actually is that your research already in that business enterprises. <laughs> in Korea, 81% of the research already oriented, uh, business enterprise oriented. Uh, in Malaysia, 21%. And in Cambodia, 3.3%. Again, I do not have the data for Indonesia. And this is a 10 science technology drivers, uh, as I mentioned just now. Uh, AI, for example, uh, blockchains, uh, data discovery, yeah, advanced materials, uh, bioscience technology, etc. These are ton of uh, technology drivers. And then if you want to study uh, to use drivers for halal industry, please use because it is it can be used, yeah. For example now in, in Korea, uh, sorry in, in, in Singapore and Thailand uh, the uh, halal traceability now use uh, blockchain technology. Uh, in the slaughterhouse in Singapore, they can identify, they can trace where the chicken come from yeah, because using the blockchain, chain, blockchain technology. So this is a thing that we have to look into it. Yeah. This is some study that we conducted in my uh, research, in my laboratory in Malaysia. Data analytics of food for infrared yeah, for non-halal adulteration conducted by my PhD student from Indonesia. Yeah. This just uh, give you some idea and it is published and then how we do this, you know, and then uh, first halal and non-halal alteration prediction we can use for prediction for big data. 
and then this is the, the lab pen is uh, we develop um, a device that can be used for detection of non-halal by normal people by ordinary people by layman person you don't have to bring the sample to laboratory yeah but uh, ordinary people can believe such as if they suspect something in the supermarket for example they can use this device and then check what the content of lard and alcohol we developed this year this is a collaboration this engineering by census profession high pressure processing is also one of the technology and to be used in halal industry because it can produce uh, a nano material very very fast yeah and we thought uh, uh, changing the characteristic of the materials and this is our electronic nose portable electronic nose i think okay and this is the business challenge i think i, I mentioned just now and from this we need to translate our business into digital yeah well so but this is aladdin group uh, in malaysia where they uh, make a lot of profit a uh, few years back here yeah. in 2017 they even sponsored um, the richest sporting club in the world of manchester united so you can imagine that they paid uh, hundreds millions of dollars us dollars to sponsor this club and then they what they do is actually to provide the digital platform for halal industry including sme small and medium enterprise but of course we have the challenges one of them is blockchain technology many muslim countries do not have the technology yet Oh, we are not used to it but if we, we, we want we can do together and then inshallah we can grab the opportunities yeah another challenge is that the halal standards are different from one to another uh, in Indonesia is different from Malaysia is different from Saudi different from Pakistan etc yeah we do not have a one single halal uh, uh, the standard in the world yeah i got uh, friends of, from korea who got already jakim certification halal yeah, from malaysia and then when they want to export the product to indonesia and then they are asked to produce another halal logo from indonesia and then she asked me whether islam in indonesia and malaysia are different or not so this is this is one of the challenges we cannot make a one single halal certification in the world under your ic it cannot here yeah? because we, we 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 do not want perhaps and this is my last uh, point here halal purification uh, practice this is another research that conducted by us uh, in order to ensure that the uh, logistic is halal Logistics, for example, is one one uh, container or one storage has been used for non-hal items before. And if it is Najis Mughal Azhar, we need to clean this as well in Islam we call Sama. What we do is that we have to clean seven times with water and one of that uh, with clay yeah, or soil. Yeah? The problem is that if it's a small object, it's okay. But if it is a big object, so it's very, very difficult. Um, um, in in, in the port, for example, in Malaysia, there are two halal ports now are the, being developed. And then we have to make sure that all the, this, this uh, logistics um, supply chains must be halal certified. This is what we do. And then first we come up with the uh, really simple one. We produce the so, uh, uh, soap that contain clay inside, meaning uh, you don't need to find the clay anymore. Yeah. So it is already inside and then certified halal. Okay. Second one is we produce this sprayer, which is a clay inside. The particle of clay is inside. So that is easy for us to do summer. Yeah. 
And then Alhamdulillah, we got a lot of requests, yeah, especially from Japan, yeah, to do summer on the on the uh, containers uh, and then the 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 storage, yeah, gudang, and so on. Yeah. Okay, I think that's what I can share this morning. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Uh, finally, I I. Um, I uh, would like to thank again the organizing committee for inviting me to this great uh, festival and then uh, to UNIDA especially, yeah, to Pak Rektor. Terima kasih banyak. Bila Taufik wal Hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Please give a round of applause to Professor Iwan B. Jaswir. Mashallah. Thank you so much, Professor, for a very valuable insight on halal industry. And uh, after this, we're going to move to Q&A session. But before that, I'd like to highlight some interesting points from His Excellency presentation. So first, it was interesting to hear that Korea in near future will be one of the leading countries in halal industry. So Korea will no longer be famous for its pop culture or any kind of uh, industry like we have today. We have uh, so many technology and gadgets in our hand produced in Korea, but they will also be soon the leading in halal industry. And it's interesting to know and to learn that this what's so called as holistic concept of halal and toyiba. So it's for me myself. It's uh, it's a very brand new idea to know that halal is not only about the meat itself or the processing itself, but the packaging and the storage need to be examined carefully to make sure that it's halal. It's very interesting. And for us here, and maybe for some uh, offline audience which come from Indonesia, uh, Professor Irwande has highlighted that Indonesia, actually, we have the potential, we have the ability to produce some of the important ingredients and I, uh, I hear it's now Professor Iwani mentioned it's super ingredients which is gelatin and we have that capability so imagine imagine the power and imagine the potential from this ability and uh, we highly respect the series of uh, research and innovation which have been produced by Professor Irwan Jaswir, including electric nose and lot and to detect halal uh, material and halal substance which is interesting because now halal has been brought to new area which is not only about the concept where we deal with Sharia or about the Usultin or about education but it's Beyond that thing, it goes to scientific word. As we have known that word has been so quantitative and this quantitative approach and this scientific approach will enable people to have more understanding about halal in more better way, which means that it reveals the truth of Islam. So, mashallah, I think we can call Professor Iswandi just not only as Professor Doctor but also Al Ustad Sheikh, I think. <laughs> if you don't mind, sir. Al Ustad Sheikh, uh, Irwan, Professor Dr. Irwan De Jaswir, for of course your contribution to da'wah, but in the field of halal industry and halal science, mashallah. And it's interesting to know that um, there are some material, including placenta and then uh, uh, gelatin. Are currently are currently being uh, prepared to be produced in Halwe and inshallah in future in the near future uh, as Professor Irwani mentioned next year inshallah we will start seeing some uh, interesting uh, factories producing halal gelatin and halal placenta uh, in, in the f near future and last point for the question I open the question it's also interesting to hear that seven time wash has been brought again to new field, it's not only like um, a Sharia, but it's now being brought to industry and to science, which is really, really interesting. 
Thank you so much again, Professor Dr. Alistair Irwan de Jasir, for a very enlightening um, uh, presentation and explanation. So now I'd like to open a Q&A session um, for the first session. Let me just make sure. Are we going to start with offline or online? Should we start with offline? Okay, I will start with offline. Uh, offline audience. So yeah, we have. We will start here with uh, Mr. Fajar. Mr. Fajar is the head of the uh, management department in Faculty of Economics and Management. Uh, yes. Could you please provide? Yeah, okay, I think you can approach the... Yeah. Yes, Prof. It is me. My name is Fajar Suryari Anggara in the, from University of Dresong Gondor. Can you hear me, Prof. Irwan Dejaswir? Yes, yes. All right. Okay, we already talked about the placenta and gelatin. We talked about the halal food, half pharmaceutical and cosmetics. I think it's uh, amazing. And as you think, Prof, how sustainable and acceptable about your findings about uh, placenta and gelatins like uh, halal industry products to the non-Muslim countries, Prof? As long as you already uh, visit uh, Korea, um, for, uh, foreign country, yes. Okay. Yeah. Terjawab, Pak? Uh, excuse me, Professor. Is the question clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, Fajar, ya. Yes. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, with regard to the sustainability of the halal uh, gelatin, ya. Yeah. Uh, actually, the most, the most critical ingredients now in the halal industry is gelatin. Halal gelatin. We do not have enough halal gelatin supply at the moment not only Indonesia but many other Muslim countries so uh, in terms of sustainability uh, uh, be because the Muslim the market of the halal industry is big I believe it is very very sustainable Very sustainable, yeah. Because uh, uh, if we ask, for example, Japan, Korea, etc., if the sum of, of for the product from the countries, those countries need to have uh, halal materials, yeah. So they need to follow the request by the industry. Uh, this is one of the story that we story. I think this I got a coin. Audio, yeah. Like, uh, one day we visited a gelatin company in France, in Europe. Okay. Since uh, the, the, you know, France is one of the biggest gelatin producers in the world. Yeah. And now they got requests from Middle East. If you want to export your cosmetic to us, you have to use a halal gelatin. What they do now, uh, one month they produce halal gelatin from uh, bovine, and then the following month they produce uh, normal gelatin from porcine, from pig. So uh, they do alternately, uh, and then one after that, uh, halal and non-halal, halal, non-halal, non using the same instrument and, and apparatus. So it is, uh, of course, it is not halal process. Uh, there is a cross contamination, but uh, at least to show us that this this uh, industry need a halal industry. 
need halal gelatin yeah so uh, in terms of sustainability i really really appreciate if there is a uh, company in indonesia that would like to produce the um, halal gelatin yeah all right prof for the last question thank you yes from your products like placenta and gelatin products is it um have uh, authorized by halal authority yeah, from Malaysia right. called Jakim or um, from the foreign countries. It means when we uh, promote to our products to the the other countries, we must have um, halal certification, right? So the main problem today is that there's there um, only some countries are using global halal standards. So. Is it possible that our products, like your findings, uh, halal placenta or halal gelatin for foods or for cosmetics, that we have only a jakim, it means from Malaysia halal certification, promote to the Koreans, promote to the German, from to the Spain. Is it out, Prof? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, of course, uh, the scenario in the world now is that every country got their own halal certification. Yes. And then uh, some country, even in Japan, more than 10 certification wow. bodies are there. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, but we know that Malaysia, uh, Jakim, and Indonesia have performed MUI. Yes. Are among the most respective halal certification in the world. Yeah. yeah. So actually, there is no issue for the product from us, from Indonesia, to be exported to the world. But what the issue that I raised in my presentation was that since every country got their own standard, yeah. it may got confusion to non-Muslim clients and consumers. As I mentioned just now, my friend, after they got from Korea, after they got a certification from Malaysia and they still need to produce another certification for Indonesia. And from the business point of view, it's very costly and time consuming. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, and then that's all from me. Mr. Moradila, I'll be back to you. Thank you, Mr. Fajr, and thank you, Prof. Iwandi, for the explanation. And now we are moving to the second question still uh, here in uh, our building. I guess Professor uh, Hartomi has one question. Yeah, okay, we will <laughs> we start from your question. Uh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. There was like, sorry, uh, a miscommunication. So I, uh, now I'm going to move to the participant in, uh, in Zoom. Uh, we received many questions here, and we are selecting some of the questions. Um, we have a question from Asep Molana. Uh, Mr. Asep Molana, you want to ask your question live, or I can, ask, I can just uh, read your question? Are you there, Asep Molana? Okay, I think I will just uh, read his question. Okay, the first question from uh, Asep Molana. Assalamualaikum, Professor Irwandi. Thank you for the beautiful presentation. Uh, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Asep Molana from Erlanga University. I would like to ask about halal and blockchain. My question is, whether there's a country that has implemented it, and what are the challenges and opportunities by implementing blockchains and halal? Thank you, Prof. Yeah, uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, when we talk about blockchains, uh, I'm not expert in blockchains, but I know how important it is. Uh, blockchain is one of the, the 10 technology drivers here. Yeah? And then in the, I think, the next 10, 20, 30 years ahead, we will see the massive use of this, this technology in every sector in our life. And then at the moment, not many countries have used blockchains. 
for uh, halal authentication, especially for traceability. Halal traceability is very, very important because many uh, halal and fraud issues in halal are not honest in declarations about the product. By having blockchain technology, this issue can be resolved. Uh, I, I, as I mentioned just now, in Singapore, for example, one of the slaughterhouse, they use uh, blockchain technology to do authentic, uh, authentication of the sing every single animal to be slaughtered. <coughs> and then we can see that, if, for example, animal A, chicken A, out of 200, 300,000 chicken that slaughtered a day, we can identify, we can trace the chicken A, where it come from, what the, what the feed is, is given to the chicken. Now, how the chicken is treated before being slaughtered, etc., etc. Because this step in future will be very, very particular for every, uh, for every person. People that concern environment, let me check whether this, the way you treat the animal your farm is very environmentally friendly or not. And then the animal feed given to the chicken, whether it is out of, uh, is, is using the non-halal contamination or not. And so we know that many protein now in the animal, in the chicken industry is derived from the blood. And uh, for some uh, Muslim scholars, it's a big issue. So the blockchain technology will resolve those problems. I, I believe and I hope the Indonesia will take uh, the opportunity. And uh, for those who are in this area, is IT, blockchain, etc. This is a, a chance for you to, to, to start from now so that we, come, we can lead this, this, this uh, sector. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, it's interesting because I think that's also one of my questions uh, related to your presentation because like blockchain was really familiar with us uh, in the term of finance. We hear uh, Bitcoin and so many like uh, cryptocurrency and that's related to blockchain. So blockchain has been so far uh, associated with that stuff. But now we have like new perspective of blockchain and I think I guess I have a kind of picture. Maybe it's like a logistic that has been done by Amazon or by in Indonesia we have GNE that we can trace the position of our uh, our package where are there and what is the, the status now I think that's just my short understanding of that and of course again I'm also not an expert in blockchain but sure it will be combined with the AI and data science thank you so much for the explanation and we have another question from Zoom Assalamualaikum Professor Irwandi I'm Tasnim from Malang. How about the opportunity for practicing halal food traceability on SMES in Indonesia, small and medium enterprises in Indonesia? Because that is an expensive investment. So the question is questioning the, uh, the cost for the, uh, developing the traceability of uh, halal foods and related with the SMEs in Indonesia. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for the question, uh, Sister Asnim here from Malang. Uh, we have to admit that SME is not seen as the, uh, the major contributors to the halal industry yet. Although we know that there are about 90 to 95 percent of the industry are from SMEs here, we do not empower the potentials. Yeah, and then the, one of the challenges is what your questions. Yeah, that they cannot afford to uh, expensive halal certification. Halal traceability, halal authentication, etc. I think this is uh, where the government need to play the roles. Yeah, not everything need to be uh, leave it to uh, private. Yeah, 
SME is a role of the government is very very important <coughs> because without helping help from the government, an SME will be will, will die even. Yeah. Uh, I quite, I'm quite optimistic actually because uh, many um, uh, private sectors also help uh, develop halal uh, certification through SME. For example, at the moment, I'm helping one of the BUMN in Indonesia to help SMEs under the, the, the guidance, uh, about 400 of them, to get the halal certification. <coughs> and then we have to to crush the industry because they do not know what halal, what the ingredients not to be there and, and, and etc. Uh, but without uh, funding, it's very, very difficult. Because, for example, when we find that uh, this one is can you cannot use this uh, ingredient, and they have to, we have to provide them the options, and uh, some of them are expensive. So this is the thing that always we see in in helping the industry SME, SMEs. Yeah. So for me, SMEs is uh, need to be developed. It's number one. Number two is the role of the government and take this as opportunity uh, to to develop the Indonesian economy because SME will relate with the uh, uh, what economy of the low class people with with the this uh, uh, with the majority of Indonesian, especially in the isolated place. Um, another is that uh, if the government play the role, the advancement in science, technology, for example, digital platform, etc., can be provided by the government by engaging SME to provide the product. So this is what I see Aladdin did. Yeah, they invite the smallest medium enterprise to put the product in this platform, so that. Uh, the SME product can be exported worldwide easily. Yeah, through this platform. And again, yeah, this is the role of the government and also perhaps a BWM and BWM day, etc. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for the explanation. So while uh, Professor Irwandi said that SMEs is not the major contributor for the halal industry, but his highly optimistic that uh, SME can play its important role, especially if it is managed by, like for example, a BOMN, where they uh, organize and supervise uh, numbers of SMEs, and as well as using latest technology and uh, platform e-commerce. So that's combining all of them and making it a bigger uh, capitalization instead of having a very small SMEs. And I guess that's remind us that um, for having like Hifdul Din, it's not enough for only Hifdul Din. We need also to have Hifdul Akal, and of course we need Hifdul Mal. So uh, the wealth, the investment, and also the capital also really playing a big, uh, a big roles here if we want to develop our religion, and especially in this case in hal industry. Okay, I'm ha I have another question here. Uh, but before I read the question in chat box, I'd like to offer to our uh, Zoom participant, is there anyone who wants to ask questions live? Is that the, the operator? Do you find anyone who are willing to... Oh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> then I will read the question. next question in Zoom chat box. Uh, okay. Assalamu alaikum, Professor Irwandi. I'm Rosina Hayati Putri from UITM Puncha Alam. I would like you to enlighten more about South Korea and its plan to be the major halal producer in the future. Thank you. Professor? Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for the questions. Yeah, I just give example of Korea. Actually, not only Korea, Japan, then China. Mm -hmm. and, so everybody's and, competing and, and now. Central Asia, all are very, very, 
very uh, eager yeah, to get the opportunity and grab uh, the 3.1 trillion yeah, shares in the whole halal market. But uh, back to your question to Korea, uh, I came to know when I was invited to the National Assembly building the other day, so in front of members of parliament, and then they mentioned that uh, Korea aims to become one of the most um, major halal uh, players, yeah? And then to me, it is not impossible because Korea got the industry already. Uh, if we talk about meat, sorry, if we talk about meat, they already produce meat, premium meat. If you know that you go to a Korean restaurant and then the premium meat is very, very expensive. I have a friend in Malaysia, the Korean friend in Malaysia, they do not buy simply buy the normal meat because for them this is low quality. <coughs> so uh, this is the thing. What they do not have is a halal. So our job is to halalize the product. So in terms of slaughtering, in terms of uh, uh, changing the ingredients, etc. And now I'm working with the Korean uh, poultry industry. They develop very, very organic chicken with the chemicals and all, and then produce this for in, now in Myanmar and coming to Malaysia and after that to Indonesia. So you know that now the leading poultry, halal poultry industry is, is Brazil. And the Korean people ask me, if, if Brazil can do, why not Korea? So this, is, this kind of determination uh, is very, very important here yeah, for us. They have they have a, a kind of determination to grab the opportunity. Because for them, uh, 3.1 trillion is very, very big. And then, unfortunately, we do not think at the same uh, pattern yeah, as what Korea does. Yeah. Another example, yeah, one day I was uh, invited to to certain part in Seoul and I visit one factory. You know what they do in this factory? They produce um, vinegar. Or in Indonesia, we call chuka, yeah? Vinegar. So in, in one place, in that place, uh, there are 400, vin uh, 400 uh, farmers. They produce a very, very small uh, lemon. Uh, maybe like uh, jeruk nipis in Indonesia, yeah? Very, very bitter very sour, sorry, not bitter, very sour. And the government provide a bio-fermenter. And then this, this uh, uh, lemon is, is uh, fermented to produce vinegar. And then this vinegar is exported to 45 Muslim countries. And then I asked them, why you export to Muslim countries? And they asked, they answered in that, uh, in Islam, there is hadith mentioning that vinegar is a remedy for your diseases. Mashallah. And then you see what? Korean read hadith and they make industry. Mashallah. Not us. Okay, thank you. Mashallah, it's interesting, like, Korean read hadith and then turn it into an industry of vinegar, of, uh, of poultry and meat. And I, I guess that's, uh, give me like um, a moment of Eureka why uh, His Excellency Professor Irwandi Jasur just now mentioned about, about premium meat, like I saw in some uh, Korean culture that sometimes they give meat as a gift, as a special gift. I was like wondering, why do they give and why people feel so happy when somebody bring like a box of meat so now my answer uh, now my question has been answered clearly so that they have what's called as premium 
meat industry, which is interesting. Okay, now we have a question from uh, the student here in our hall. Uh, so please, Mr. Atta, to ask the question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, for the equation. Hello, my name is... Uh, please look at the camera and yes. you can see Professor Irwan from that screen. Uh, my name is Atta Mahdi. I am the student of University of Darussalam Gontor from Islamic Economic Department, sixth semester. Uh, here I'm going to convey to short, two short questions, Prof. Uh, my first question is, uh, what is the most major problem of global halal standard? And my second question goes to, uh, which of the group contribute high significant culture influence on the consumption habits in the wider global Muslim community, Prof? Thank you. Those are my two questions. Yes, Professor. Number two again. I can. I couldn't. Uh, could you please okay, repeat? I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to repeat my second question. Uh, which of the group contribute high significant culture influence on the consumption habits in the wider global Muslim community? So, sorry, I, the line is not so clear here. I still do not get the second question. What the most contributing factor or what? I think I will uh, highlight one of the questions. So one of the question: what is the biggest challenge yeah. for the uh, formation of internationally recognized yeah. uh, halal standards? So what are the challenges? Uh, because you, uh, Your Excellency have mentioned you now that it is hard and some people really don't want it. It, it seems there is something secret or something unspoken there. So I think yeah, okay. one of our students is like yeah. curious. He wants to know more what exactly the yeah, problem okay. there. Yeah, that's number one. And number two, uh, doctor, can you repeat it? Can you repeat? Okay, I will ask him to repeat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which of the group contribute had significant yeah. culture influence on the consumption habits in the wider global Muslim community? Oh, consumption habit. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So I try to answer. Yeah, number one. <laughs> Actually, that I don't have, uh, I don't hide anything. <laughs> I do not the. Um, uh, yeah, when we talk about the global halal standard, uh, at the moment we do not have, we don't have any. Um, uh, every year we conduct uh, seminar conferences on the halal certification. Uh, in Malaysia there is one, in Turkey there is one in Istanbul, and in Thailand there is also one every year. But the most that we can do now is harmonizing the halal standard not to come with the single standard worldwide like ISO for example yeah you know I saw only one ISO everywhere is implementing the same so if you ask me what the reason why people do not want etc I think I, I sorry I cannot say anything but from my observation it could be that we don't want to unite And we feel that we are better than others. We are better than others. For example, we feel that our certification is the best. Other people's certification is not uh, is, is not that good, for example. And we forgot that it will jeopardize the image of Islam to non-Muslim. Non-Muslim will feel that how come Islam there are uh, hundred and um, sorry, hundreds of certification body worldwide. While we use the same Quran, the same Hadith, some people may say that oh, it is we we have a different um, mashab or something. But 
in terms of fiqh and usul fiqh, the mashab is not that much different when related to to the halal food, for example, yeah. And then we can put some knots if we want, yeah. Or for example, for this the seafood, or according to Shafi'i like this, according to Ambali like this, we can make it with single certification body. But unfortunately, until now, and then we make doa, and then uh, that one day we will see that only one united, unified halal certification. Number two, number two, what the most contributing factor for people in the term of consumption of halal products? Uh, for me, number one is uh, halal awareness. Because, because, because at the moment, uh, 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 people is not made known to the current or uh, advancement in terms of research and innovation. In food industry, for example, more than 500 ingredients or additive is purposely added in small quantities. And layman person, ordinary people do not know about this. So we have to inform them. Uh, 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 in terms of, of uh, halal awareness. The more we give to them knowledge, and then the more people know about the product, and then the more uh, influence uh, the habit then to choose the halal product. I think that's all I can answer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Iwandi. The discussion is getting more and more interesting. And I think I, I want to uh, mention that it is not the first time for Professor Irwandi to be our distinguished speaker in our university. Uh, he has been the speaker in international conference and international uh, seminar about health, which is uh, health by the University of Darussalam Gontor, especially in the Faculty of Health Science. So this is the second time, if I'm not mistaken, for Professor Iwani to be the speaker. And I guess, given the multidisciplinary field that he has explained just now, I think another faculty should bring another, um, should bring another uh, webinar or international seminar about maybe to be more specific about the technology and the halal industry. So we are still having so many questions here. I tried to quickly select some of the questions. Uh, I, I found one of a very important question, and as it has been in my mind as well. Um, we have a question here from uh, Mr. Aminullah. I would like to ask a question in Malang. Again, we, are, we get question from Malang. Uh, in Malang, uh, there's a producer of fried chicken who claims that they play a murattal uh, into their chickens before they make them as food to be sold. What's your opinion, Professor? Thank you. I'm not sure if the question or the answer will be, uh, uh, will be matching with this, um, with this webinar, but I think this is a very interesting question, especially we are talking about uh, the poultry industry and halal industry. Professor. Yeah, yeah, so, sorry, Doctor, can you repeat what the... Okay, the question is about... In Malang, what? Yeah, one of the producer of fried chicken, and they claim that yeah. every day they are playing murattal, qira'ah murattala, they're playing qira'ah murattala for okay. the... Yeah, so that the chicken will listen to it every day before they are produced to be, uh, uh, to be fried chicken. And the question simply, what do you think, what's your opinion about this? Is there any, maybe what he's trying to ask, is there any scientific evidence that this will, uh, this will improve the quality of the meat or this has something to do with halal science? Or I think that's like the question behind this question. Yeah. Yes, Professor. Professor Iwandi? Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you. Thank you Dr. <laughs> for the questions. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, even though not much study uh, has been done on that, 
um, but I read some. Yeah, I read some um, uh, telling the uh, uh, effect or not effect the relationship between the way we treat the animals to the quality of the meat produced. And then I, I believe and I strongly believe that it is very, very highly related. Oh. Okay. Uh, we can still hear you clearly. Okay. Um, for example, uh, 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 cows that treated with music. In, mm -hmm. uh, this is a study that I read in the journals. Different oh. type of music will produce a different quality of meat. Wow. of the animal, uh, the hard uh, music and the soft music, and then the uh, 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 classical music. So the classical music will give a more a better quality of meat. Mm. This is this is uh, proven yeah, in, in published in the journals. And then uh, not I don't have a uh, data on the the reciting the more hotel. For a chicken, this is maybe this is a good innovation. <coughs> and then I, I, I think uh, it could be uh, also a, 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 a better way uh, to treat the, the animals. Uh, now, in in the animal industry, halal animal industry, people st uh, people start uh, being very careful. Yeah how with what we we treated the animal before they are slaughtered mm. the size of the cage for example for for you see now in one big lorry all the animal are, are, are put together cramp and then uh, oh. and then uh, the animal very very stressful mm -hmm. being being slot before being slaughtered and then after that, the quality of the meat is very, very bad. So mm -hmm. the way we treat the animal, it must be uh, uh, very careful. Yeah, we have to take care very much. And then uh, a lot of study now being done in Malaysia, also in University Putra Malaysia, in Sepertanian Malaysia before. Yeah, they do this. The, how we did it, treat the animal, the chicken, for example, before they are, are treated. Mm -hmm. So, uh, animal, it is um, uh, placed in very, very nicely uh, cage, for example, and the density is not that high. They will produce a better quality of meat in the end. So, I think uh, uh, maybe those who are here in, in uh, living in 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 Malang, can maybe we can start doing uh, studying on this. Yeah? You see the characteristic of the meat, chicken with morotal mm -hmm. and chicken without morotal. That's so interesting. That's see. that's yeah. interesting. This is a little like yeah. mind blowing idea that the uh, the treatment treatment before the animal was tortured have very big impact. So it has been. There in the teaching of Islam, in yeah. Hadith, we know about it, but then in application, yeah. sometimes yeah. some of us didn't really realize it. And it's also yeah. mind blowing that there is a real um, publication on the effect of some music uh, to the quality of the meat. So it, I think it has to do with the stress level of the animals yeah. and how yeah. the metabolism process, uh, the blood flows and yeah. everything related to that. So yes, well, can I add something, uh, doctor? Even in my laboratory, mm -hmm. uh, when we do, uh, uh, we know um, what do we call uh, stunning. Yeah, stunning is the animal is treated with electric current before they are slaughtered. Oh in order to make them easy to to slaughter mm -hmm. it is allowed by by uh, fatwa in oh. Indonesia Malaysia is allowed but not in Brunei mm -hmm. yeah uh, our findings if it is over uh, beyond the voltage yeah uh, so in Malaysia the, the 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 maximum voltage is based on the study they conducted in our laboratory Okay, so if it is over stand, over stand means the work is too high. The composition, my research, the composition of the protein profile near the neck area mm -hmm. is different. Oh, it's different. 
So it showed that uh, there is there's something different yeah, effect if we treat differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whether we treat the animal nicely or with because electric current is very shocking. Mm-hmm. And then the, a lot of uh, stress and then the, some of the protein uh, the derivative might be produced medially by the bodies. We do not know. But our findings show that the protein profile are different. I'm quite uh, sure that uh, in terms of Murotal just now, uh, there's something different. But uh, we need to study this year. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. And we have some more interesting uh, question. This is, I think, one of, in, in, in my experience as moderator, I think this is one of the most interesting webinars so far. And of course, it's not surprising because um, the speaker itself has a very high magnitude speaker and an internationally renowned speaker. Uh, professor, I, I understand that your time is very valuable and very expensive, but please allow me to to help some of the curious uh, people there in Zoom to deliver their questions. So pardon me to take some of your time. Um, uh, now I have a question far there from EIEN Ambon. Yeah, EIEN Ambon. I think this question has been covered with your previous answer, but maybe he won't get more clarification. Uh, professor, one of the obstacles for small industry or home industry to progress is obtaining HAL certification. How do you see this phenomenon? I think it has been covered with a few questions, but maybe if you'd like to give a short uh, elaboration to this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah, this is, I think, uh, uh, it's true, said, <laughs> said but true, yeah. Um, Recently, the, uh, our president, President Jokowi, mentioned that the for SME should be free. Mm. The cost for certification should be free because if I now I try to recall the the cost, it's about close to three three juta rupiah, yeah, three million per mm. in the certification. And then the, uh, what our president mentioned, it is free. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, it's no cost at all. Free is uh, without biaya uh, dari APBN, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the cost of for uh, paying these auditors, uh, registration, mm-hmm. etc., is still there. So what we can do is that is find a sponsor of big companies mm-hmm. and then take this as part of the CSR. Oh, that's great. Mm. This is what I mentioned just now. I'm now working with one of uh, in oil and gas. And then they sponsored uh, about 400 SMEs to get certification. And we are paid because we hire auditors. Auditors cannot be free. And mm-hmm. then the, the cost for LP POM to get to issue the certification, they send the auditors to do audit, side audit. It's costly. So what we can do is that to get, I uh, to to get the work together with the uh, web uh, and dengan Pemda, etc., and then to help the SME. Yeah, I agree that it is uh, quite not so. Costly, but three, three juta nggak tahu tuh mahal atau tidak ya. Mm-hmm. But three million uh, for for small industry is quite expensive. Okay, uh, but this one way that we can do, even university can play the role to file to match this. This as uh, mm-hmm. the sponsors and this is the SMEs and the role of the university to match them. And this is part of our uh, CSR or the university. A part of our dakwah. So this is what we can do, um, and then I have uh, proven that it works. And then we are now for the first step of 24 SMEs need to get certification within two months. Mm-hmm. We are given the task, and then I, I and my team work on that. Yeah, we have them. It's very, very possible. Mm-hmm. They do not get the certification because they do not know. They don't have knowledge about oh, the modern okay. food ingredients. Yeah, only. Could you please, like, yeah, uh, explicitly you. mention the name of yeah. that 
BUMN, maybe it will be beneficial for. Yes, uh, if if uh, this is this is this is not to promote, yeah, and not yeah, okay, of course. from Pertamina. Oh, okay. So the uh, our brother who asked this question, you can try to find more information to uh, the nearest Pertamina office there, and then maybe you can ask the possibility to have their CS CSR to help you in whole certification. Yeah. Okay. Next question, we have a question from uh, Universitas Islam Indonesia, one of major uh, Islamic university and one of the oldest as well in Indonesia. Uh, excuse me, great opportunity to hear your speech, Professor. I'm Rizal Bayou, pursuing Islamic economics in Universitas Islam Indonesia. I got a question for you, how to promote and adjust Halal ideology when you live in environment which is you as a minority, even they don't know Islam, moreover halal industry. I guess the question is related with um, a person as a Muslim as a person, not as not as not like as an industry. Uh, maybe if I try to understand this question, if you live, for example, uh, you live in uh, the UK, for example, or in yeah. the United States. As a person, and maybe people around you don't really understand about the halal industry. They don't know about Islam, they don't know about halal. So the question, how to promote uh, and adjust halal ideology when you live in an environment where you, are not, where you are the minority? Yeah. Uh, uh, to me, now, is, um, if you live in, 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 in the uh, Muslim minority, I live in Japan for two years. I live in Canada for three years before, and then we we we, we were a minority yeah, in Jamaica Islam. But uh, number one is uh, for ourselves. Uh, of course, uh, we have to strengthen our iman, our faith, and then we have to stick to what is allowed, what is not allowed for us. And then we thought telling others that um, uh, uh, what. How to say this? Uh, not to be seen as uh, as just make it a normal one. In in in, in long way, the people will know that uh, you are very very uh, uh, you you follow your religion on the. We don't we not we don't have to tell people. Oh, Islam. Uh, this mm -hmm. is not really what I practice. My so I just I just I know for myself, and then people will know indirectly. Mm -hmm. But if we want to promote as a, as a halal ideology, etc., the best the best way to promote is that from the business perspective. Oh, this is why uh, people in Japan, in Korea, mm -hmm. and many non-Muslim countries, they get into halal industry because they see this uh, the business potential. 3.1 trillion, and uh, this imagine a year. And then everyone is attracted to to get into mm -hmm. halal industry. So when we we, we 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 do from the business perspective, and the people will be in the same wavelength, the talk in the same frequency, because everyone is is like to to do. Okay, of course, yeah. Uh, now when the awareness is there. Uh, but if you are a scholar and then you start writing article and then you publish, the good thing is that people just take this starting with the business. This is my, my trick. Yeah, when I do recently, I publish one uh, book, uh, one chapter in a book, and publish in US. I write a book about the halal industry. So I started my first paragraph with the business point of view, and then imagine it is published in the US. So this is the, the best the best way. Uh, of course, the great the Muslim scholar need to write a lot. You need to publish your own works and then make uh, a massive publication so that people will see that halal is no longer uh, a, um, a different things. You know, it is just a normal one. It's like people uh, or the Jews uh, promote the uh, kosher product. So Alhamdulillah, now if we compare the situation nowadays with the, in the last in the 10 years or 20 years ago, 
now it's much better. People, I think you go to Korea, halal is no longer strange to them. You go to America, people is people know the halal. In Japan, for example, there are three, there are every, I think two, three airport. There is a surau there, musola. In in Narita airport, there are two halal restaurant. So uh, because uh, we try to promote halal in in, in a polite way. You know? I think I, I thank you. I answered the question. Thank, thank you, you, Professor. That's really inspiring to know how you personally have successfully promote halal industry and halal ideology itself by doing the approach that has been recognized by, let's say, Western or non-Muslim. And I think by bringing the halal industry and halal itself to science with all of those quantitative researches, it's opened their eye that halal is not just about what we believe and it's not only about something metaphysic, but there is something physical about it. It's not about only something intangible, but there is something tangible. And it's not only about a belief, but it's about opportunity and about a business as well. Thank you, Professor Irwandi Jaswir, for a very interesting and inspiring uh, speech and presentation and explanation. And I'd like to uh, welcome the Governor of Bank Indonesia, Central Bank of Indonesia, Mr. Perry, Wardia MSG PhD. Uh, Dr. Perry, are you with us currently? Can you hear my voice? Alhamdulillah, uh, we are very honored this morning. We have two distinguished guests. Um, Dr. Perry, Bargio, are you with us now? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can we confirm that um, you can see my pictures and you can hear my voice? So the Atika, uh, is it possible to contact uh, His Excellency's Secretary to make sure that he's online? Assalamualaikum, Bapak Perry Warjio, PhD. Assalamualaikum, Bapak. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, it's a great honor and a great pleasure for us a big family of University of Dar es Salaam Gontor to again welcome our, mashallah, uh, I think we can call you our father now <laughs> because we have been uh, meeting you for so many times and we have been very close to you and mashallah, every year we also have 50% of our student uh, receiving award from Bank Indonesia scholarship, mashallah. Uh, I will just give you a short update about our activity today, uh, uh, Dr. Perry Wardio. So today we have a very nice discussion with a uh, prominent scholar, Professor Irwandi Jaswir, and we spent almost two hours, Pak Perry, so far, we spent almost two hours discussing about halal industry and how halal industry will help us and will help our economy to revive after this uh, pandemic. So it's very interesting discussion. And alhamdulillah, uh, this uh, webinar has been joined by hundreds of participants online and of course offline and of course it's also the support of Bank Indonesia. And I'd like to thank uh, Professor Irwandi Jaswir for your uh, presentation and explanation for people here. And people online, please give a round of applause to Professor Irwandi Jaswir. Thank you so much. It has been 
very, very inspiring um, explanation and inspiration because it's not only a theory, but it has been there in the practice. And today we are going to uh, move to the next step, uh, the next agenda of our uh, webinar today. We are going to listen first to the welcoming speech of uh, the president of the University of Darussalam Gontor, as well as the Sheikh of Gontor, Professor Dr. Kail Haj Malfatullah Zarkashi. Please welcome His Excellency with a round of applause. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, people are going to my speed. Excuse me, uh, I welcome to Mr. Ferry Warjio, PhD, Bapak Professor Dr. Irwan Dijaswir, and Dr. Noriki. Mitsuko and Hasanuddin, Professor Dr. Hasanuddin Atulaziz. Uh, because my presentation, uh, my preparation is very short, so I want to delay uh, my speech in, in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. di tengah pandemi yang sedang merundung dunia saat ini. Kata sehat menjadi semakin sering disebut dalam setiap komunikasi. Karena kita semua semakin menyadari betapa berbahagianya kesehatan itu, betapa berharganya kesehatan. Saat ini setiap pertemuan selalu diselipkan harapan sekaligus doa melalui kalimat salam sehat. Alhamdulillahirrohmanirrohim segala puji dan syukur kehadirat Allah Subhanahu wa taala atas rahmat dan rahmat dan inayahnya kita dapat berkumpul walaupun secara virtual. Dalam keadaan sehat di hari yang baik ini, yaitu Grand Opening Festival Fakultas Ekonomi dan Manajemen, rangkaian kegiatan yang mendukung kemajuan ekonomi dan keuangan syariah Indonesia. Selawat dan salam, marilah kita panjatkan syukur kepada Allah Subhanahu Taala dan juga kepada Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam beserta keluarganya. Kepada para tamu undangan, khususnya Bapak Ferry, Bapak Profesor Rirwandi Jaswir, selamat datang di kampus kami. Terima kasih tetap kami sampaikan berkenan dengan meluangkan waktu untuk hadir dalam acara webinar kali ini. Perkenan pula bahwa kesempatan ini saya ingin menyampaikan bahwa Badan Wakaf Pondok Modern Darsalam Gontor telah memberikan amanat kepada Profesor Dr. Kiaji Ahmad Fahmi Zarkasi sebagai Rektor Universitas Darussalam Gontor menggantikan saya sejak bulan Desember 2020. Jabatan Rektor di UNIDA ini bukan jabatan politik dan bukan jabatan yang diperbutkan, tetapi ini adalah amanat berat yang harus dipertanggungjawabkan di dunia dan di akhirat. Semoga dengan amanah badan wakaf ini, Unida Gontor bisa menjadi world class university dan juga universitas Islam yang diakui oleh baik nasional maupun internasional. Babil khusus, 
hubungan kita dengan BI akan lebih akrab lagi. Bapak-bapak dan ibu yang berbahagia, saat ini manusia sedang menghadapi tantangan yang sangat berat. Tangan tersebut tidak hanya berbentuk tantangan fisik yang selalu kita alami dan waktu ke waktu, namun tantangan saat ini lebih mendasar lagi, lebih fundamental, yaitu tantangan dalam menjaga iman dan kesehatan mental kita. Pandemi COVID-19 ini sangat menyangkut aspek kesehatan, bahkan kemanusiaan. Pembatasan mobilitas manusia untuk mencegah pandemi COVID-19 telah berdampak pada berhentinya berbagai aktivitas ekonomi, menurunnya pendapatan masyarakat, dan bahkan meningkatnya jumlah pengangguran. Pandemi COVID-19 telah mempengaruhi pertumbuhan ekonomi, namun demikian tidak perlu, ter, tidak perlu terlalu dibedakan mana yang perlu diselamatkan lebih dulu, yaitu manusianya, ekonominya, karena keduanya sesungguhnya bermakna semuanya, atau keduanya sangat berhubungan erat. Manusia adalah makhluk ekonomi. Menyelamatkan manusia berarti menyelamatkan ekonomi. Sebaliknya menyelamatkan ekonomi juga berarti menyelamatkan manusia. Bapak Gubernur yang kami hormati, di tengah kondisi wabah yang menyerang seluruh penjuru dunia, Unida Gontor tetap melangsungkan kegiatan mahasiswa demi menjalankan kegiatan pendidikan yang berbasis pesantren, kegiatan yang ada di Unida Gontor terus berjalan, walaupun dengan serangkaian protokol kesehatan yang wajib dipatuhi oleh seluruh masyarakat Unida Gontor. Kita dapat menyebutkan bahwa kampus Unida Gontor, itu kalau di sana ada social distancing, kita ini social uh, di setengah kampus, huh? isolation, social isolation. Jadi seluruh mahasiswa berada di dalam kampus, dosen-dosen uh, ajar di dalam kampus bisa mengadakan kuliah secara offline. Kemudian saat ini sedang berlangsung acara Grand Opening Festival Fakultas Ekonomi dan Manajemen yang keempat. Agenda, agenda tahunan FEM yang rutin dilaksanakan. Alhamdulillah, tahun ini agenda ini dapat terlaksana sesuai dengan jadwal, walaupun hanya memandang kamera dan laptop untuk bisa berkomunikasi. Kita ini tidak mengenal social distancing yang ada istilahnya lockdown walk Home in Unida, tadi kita sebutkan social isolation. Tapi tidak lama karena langsung mengentatkan kebijakan keluar kampus mahasiswa santri dan juga dosen selalu terbatas. Mahasiswa semuanya tinggal di dalam kampus, demikian juga dosen bisa tertangani dengan baik. Semoga dengan kegiatan Fakultas Ekonomi dan manajemen ini dapat memberikan kawasan, wawasan pengetahuan dan pengetahuan kepada mahasiswa Universitas Darussalam Gontor, serta lingkup nasional maupun internasional pada umumnya. Saya berharap semoga kegiatan ini memberikan kontribusi yang berarti bagi kemajuan ekonomi dan juga kemajuan pendidikan di Indonesia khususnya. Kita sebelum ini pada bulan Agustus juga mengadakan <coughs> uh, seminar webinar yang sebelumnya itu bersama BI yang dihadiri kira-kira uh, 400 dari pada peserta. Tapi kita lebih bersyukur lagi kiranya di dalam seminar kita tentang 
ilmu kesehatan itu internasional seminar itu dihadiri lebih dari seribu <tuh> ini kita bersyukur artinya kita walaupun dengan webinar ini kita tetap melakukan aktivitas dengan sebaik-baiknya akhir kata saya mengucapkan banyak terima kasih kepada seluruh pihak yang mendukung terlaksana acara ini dan mohon maaf segala perencanaan acara ini masih banyak kekurangan Akhirul kalam wabillahul musta'an wa wali taufik assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam Thank you Profesor Dr. Kela Haj Amal Fatullah Zarkashi Uh, the President of University of Darussalam Gontor for his welcoming remarks. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are stepping on to the key feature of our agenda today, which is keynote speech that will be delivered by Bapak Dr. Perry Wardjo. And I believe everybody knows him very well, but I'd like to first read His Excellency's CV. Dr. Perry Wardio officially served as Governor of Bank Indonesia on 24 May 2018. Before serving as the Governor of Bank Indonesia, he was the Deputy Governor of Bank Indonesia from 2013 to 2018 for monetary policy, international policy, Sharia economics and finance, and financial market deepening. Prior to this position, Dr. Perry served as the Assistant Governor for Monetary Mercoprudential and International Policy. The post he held after the Executive Director of Economic Research and Monetary Policy Department, Bank Indonesia, since 2009. Before rejoining Bank Indonesia since July 2009, he served for two years as the Executive Director in International Monetary Fund, IMF, representing 13 member countries in the Southeast Asia Voting Group. He has a long-standing career in Bank Indonesia in the areas of economic research and monetary policy, central banking studies and training, office of governors, monetary policy strategy and organization transformation, foreign exchange management, and international issues. Dr. Perry is also a lecturer in the postgraduate studies in the University of Indonesia and visiting lecturers in a number of reputable universities in Indonesia. In addition, he has authored and published a number of books, journals, and papers on economy, monetary and international issues. He has offered numerous high-level keynote speeches that have influenced public policy. He holds master and PhD degrees in monetary and international finance from Iowa State University, United States of America. Today, His Excellency will enlighten us on Indonesia COVID recovery, government target post academics economic revival. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Perry Wardjo with a warm applause. Thank you, uh, Brother uh, Taufik uh, Afandi, for the nice uh, introduction. My pleasure, sir. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asrofil ambiyai wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amabad. Yang saya hormati, Excellency, Uh, President of Islamic uh, Boarding uh, School, Darussalam Gontor, my dear uh, guru, uh, I always admire of his wisdom, his uh, knowledge, and always guide us, uh, including myself, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Kiai Haji Amal Fatullah uh, Zarkasi, is uh, 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 good to see you, sir, and uh, my, uh, you know, My, uh, I, I, I wish I be there uh, to see your uh, smile, your wisdom, your calm, and, and, and admire your uh, uh, leadership. 
uh, welcome and also congratulations for Rector of uh, Unida Gontor, Professor Dr. Jaya Haji Hamid Fahmin uh, Fah Fahmi Jarkasi, uh, distinguished speaker, uh, Professor Dr. Erwandi uh, Jaswir, uh, Mr. Noriaki Matsumoto, and others as well as Uh, my dear friend of uh, Unida Gontor as well as uh, participants. It's always a pleasure for me uh, to meet uh, your Excellency Speaker and also uh, my friends there. Uh, my uh, uh, congratulations for this excellent international seminar and always uh, I'm delighted to give uh, the address Uh, I will I will uh, 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 talking on those uh, two aspect. Uh, just uh, let share the the slide uh, uh, to uh, so everybody can can you know uh, 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 can look into uh, what I will be uh, talking about, uh, which is on I'm being asked to talk about Indonesia uh, COVID-19 economic recovery. What is the outlook? Uh, what is the policy as well as how is we see the role of Sariah economic and finance in supporting the economic uh, recovery. Uh, next slide, I will talk about two aspects, uh, which is uh, the first, uh, how is the national economic recovery is underway, what is the outlook or what is the policy direction, and the second, uh, Saria economic and finance, how is the prospect as well as how in Indonesia we are jointly <clears throat> together uh, increasing the role of Saria economic finance supporting the economic uh, recovery. Uh, from the Center Bank, uh, we also also already published uh, our report both on the national economic recovery as well as on the uh, uh, Saria economic and uh, finance. And uh, of course, we will be glad to provide uh, to Universitas Darussalam uh, Condor as a uh, reference. Let me just uh, start uh, quickly on the first uh, issue, which is national economic uh, recovery outlook and policy direction. Next slide, please. Uh, we are seeing uh, after a very difficult uh, challenge uh, last year, uh, we are seeing um, uh, economic recovery is uh, underway globally as well as Uh, nationally. Of course, this is uh, supported by uh, implementation of the program of vaccination globally, including also in Indonesia, uh, and also uh, continuing large stimulus, both from the fiscal uh, budget as well as from the central bank. We see uh, global uh, GDP growth uh, will be, we forecast uh, this year, will be uh, growing about 5.1% uh, after contraction of minus 3.5%. 5% last year. Uh, we are seeing some uh, recovery in the US, 4.7%, China, 8.1%, as well as India, 9%, uh, including the ASEAN 5, which is also growing about 5 to 6%. Uh, percent. Uh, we are seeing uh, mobility of uh, people are increasing, vaccinations underway, also supporting the stimulus, both from fiscal and monetary. In Indonesia, uh, we are forecasting this year will be growing about 4.3 to 5.3 percent economic recovery already uh, starting uh, to uh, uh, gradually increase uh, so, you know uh, in uh, last year starting in the third quarter uh, and fourth quarter uh, even though we are still see some contraction but contraction is uh, becoming lower and lower and uh, yeah We are, we are expecting this year growing to 4.3% to 5%. It will be supported by, of course, uh, export performance, which is quite good, uh, capitalizing the global economic uh, recovery and continuing on consumption, uh, both uh, because of support from the fiscal stimulus, uh, social program, as well as also some uh, expenditure on the investment. I think we are, we are, we are, we are, we are seeing some uh, positive development and uh, economic recovery underway. 
Externally, uh, we are we are we are forecasting our current account deficit will be about uh, minus one to two percent of GDP after very low uh, minus point four uh, percent. Uh, our foreign exchange reserve uh, after declining the first quarter last year uh, continue increasing. Now it's uh, 138 billion US dollar after end of last year 135.9 uh, billion US dollar. This is a uh, more than ample to. To, uh, finance uh, not only import government debt services also uh, to strengthen our exchange rate our exchange rate uh, it was under uh, severe pressure on the first uh, quarter last year because of global financial pa pa panic uh, reaching about uh, 16,310 uh, uh, rupiah per dollar back then but now already strengthening about uh, 14,000 and we are seeing some uh, continuing improvement appreciation of exchange rate group uh, going forward. Inflation will also continue to be under control. Uh, last month is very low, uh, 1.58 percent. Last year is also very low, and this year will be about our target, 3 plus minus 1 uh, percent. Uh, our policy rate we cut uh, aggressively last year, uh, six times, uh, you know, uh, until last uh, week uh, board uh, meeting. Our policy rate end of the last year. 3.75 percent now is 3.5 percent in the effort of uh, supporting the economic uh, recovery overall banking condition is okay but the issue is of course how to support uh, bank financing uh, to boost our economic uh, recovery this is the focus of our policy initiative globally our economic recovery next slide been supported very strong coordination between the government central bank financial services uh, authority. I think uh, uh, Silaturahim, the strengthening of the coordination are very, very strong. Uh, uh, we are focusing, of course, uh, as a prerequisite, as a game danger, as vaccination and discipline of COVID-19 uh, protocol. I'm, I'm very delighted that, uh, you know, uh, Pondok Pesantren Gontor, Universitas Darussalam Gontor, and the complex there uh, applying, uh, you know, the discipline of protocol uh, COVID, and that, and that will be uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 ideal uh, way. Uh, the program I will uh, share how is the program of vaccination by the government uh, underway and being uh, expanded. And uh, also five policy response. Uh, coordinate, coordination is very, uh, very, very close between the government, central bank, financial service authority and others. Of course, opening up some productive and uh, safe sector. Uh, 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 this is uh, true, uh, of course, uh, 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 you know, uh, we have to do the vaccination protocol COVID to save uh, life, but at the same time, we also need to open up some uh, sector of the productive uh, and, of course, a uh, safe uh, sector. This is the focus, uh, sector by sector, uh, which is supporting uh, the economic recovery, including food and beverage, uh, automotive, uh, property, uh, trade, uh, you know, and other sector being opening up, including also SME. Fiscal CMOS being acceleration, uh, focus on the uh, financing of the economy as well as uh, uh, from the central bank continuing uh, stimulus from monetary and uh, as well as from uh, macro prudential and digitalization of the payment uh, system. Next slide please. The program of the vaccination is already underway. We are entering on the second phase of vaccination. After the first phase of uh, vaccination which is focusing on our uh, friend which is in the front line in the hospital uh, some uh, you know our, our friend for medical uh, you know doctors and uh, nurse and, and so on including also uh, the uh, uh, the 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 you know the task force for the COVID-19. We are entering the second phase, which is uh, for the civil civil servant uh, providing public services as well as for the senior uh, uh, citizen. Uh, the government already uh, securing uh, the 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 needed uh, vaccination to have a herd immunity of 60% of the population. Uh, the total the doses of vaccine 
Philippine Series about 365.9 uh, million uh, doses of uh, vaccination coming from uh, different suppliers uh, from China, from Europe, from US and, 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 and so on and uh, you know uh, uh, gra uh, 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 gradually this uh, vaccine already uh, coming uh, so uh, on the vaccination of course first uh, the the vaccine supply already being secured by the government the funding the funding of the va vaccine estimated about 74 ID trillion 74 ID trillion where is the coming from about 74 uh, ID trillion coming of course from the budget but of course uh, coming from uh, last year uh, the central bank purchasing government bond directly uh, from uh, medical budget and so on not all of them was spent in last year about 47 ID uh, trillion rupiah trillion uh, will be carried over uh, this year and I already uh, you know uh, 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 recommended the, the president Mr. Finance to use 47 to finance the vaccine so so the central bank also participating in financing of the uh, vaccine of course some of the vaccines coming from uh, from uh, the budget and other resources so uh, now on the uh, the, uh, the aspect of the implementation often the first uh, uh, states now the focus of vaccination is to uh, you know uh, public uh, uh, service for you know uh, all of the offices that uh, provide public services are the, the, the focus now in addition to that uh, more vaccination will be done from region to region starting from Jakarta wider area vaccination in the market for example last week um, vaccination and pasar pasar tanah bang uh, uh, market and will be expand to 115 pasar uh, throughout the Jakarta wider area and then we'll be going to other city, other region, and, and so on. So the focus now, not only uh, distribution of vaccine throughout the country, but also uh, focusing on the uh, area that supporting the mobility, the economic recovery, starting from wide uh, uh, Jakarta area, and then coming to other, other, uh, other regions. So I think, hopefully, with the vaccination, inshallah, that will be uh, supporting the health mobility of the people will be increasing and economic will be uh, will be also uh, recovery will be uh, moving forward uh, ne next slide please uh, and from the budget fiscal stimulus will continue underway under 2021 uh, state budget already being allocated about 408 uh, 0.7 ID uh, trillion for social program and 471 uh, uh, 0.8 ID trillion for capital expenditure for infrastructure. Those uh, allocation is among other allocation in the budget to support the economic recovery. For this uh, two allocation, I think we believe we support uh, in solo the economic recovery for uh, supporting the uh, consumption of the people as well as infrastructure development. So the fiscal stimulus I think will also support the economic recovery uh, next slide uh, from the center bank we continue uh, uh, you know uh, focusing all of our instrument to support the economic recovery not only monetary policy macro financial payment system but also other uh, supporting policy including uh, to support Syria economic and finance just to uh, give some feature what we have been doing next slide which is uh, you know we on the on the monetary policy next slide please uh, on the monetary policy we already cut our uh, policy rates uh, you know uh, aggressively since last year now it's very low 3.5 percent this is the lowest in the history uh, we already stabilizing exchange rate but we also uh, uh, injected so much liquidity or quantitative easing in the economy 750.38 ID adrian one of the largest uh, from the emerging market we also participating in financing the government budget through a purchase of government bond from primary market last year we purchased government bond from primary market uh, both from the market and directly 473.4 ID uh, trillion rupiah trillion uh, for 2020 budget this year uh, so far uh, up to 16 of February we purchased 40.77 uh, rupiah uh, trillion 
We also relax our macro budget to boost bank financing to the economy, including the latest policy that we uh, we took at the last board meeting, uh, adoption of zero uh, percent down payment for bank loans or financing uh, for automatic uh, purchases, as well as a hundred percent loan to value ratio, meaning also zero uh, percent down payment uh, for uh, you know bank loans and financing to property sector will be started uh, first of March and and apply to the end of this year. We also uh, to uh, to uh, expedite the the lowering interest rate of the banks to provide loan and financing. We have uh, at the uh, transparency also uh, maintaining accommodative macro budget policy. Uh, payment is system digitalization. Uh, we we already uh, reforming our digitalization. Uh, we are expanding the use of QR Indonesian standard, which is the only standard that apply in Indonesia. Last year is uh, close to uh, 6 million uh, SME uh, being registered nationally as merchant of the digital. This year we targeted 12 million uh, SME to be uh, to be a registered national merchant and uh, many of them are also SME that working on the Sharia or Islamic economic and, and finance. And we continue uh, electronic vacation uh, of a social program and others. Also, we are reforming our payment system infrastructure, uh, also uh, boosting digital banking, uh, fintech, electronic money to uh, to uh, to support economic recovery. We do believe digitalization payment uh, system will be accelerated. The financial inclusion and economic inclusion, uh, both conventional and Sharia, uh, to support the economic recovery. And this is also uh, the, the, the policy that uh, Bank Indonesia supporting uh, SME, Sharia Economic Finance, uh, and other uh, area with uh, coordination with the government. Let me, let me touch upon the second aspect. Next slide is how central bank uh, take our uh, uh, role, but we want that. I think uh, uh, in the back of pandemic COVID, I think uh, digitalization uh, is, is becoming uh, important. This is uh, the new uh, normal. This is new era of more digitalization, whether on, on the economic and finance. Uh, E-commerce, for example, transaction in Indonesia is very growing very, very fast. Uh, last year is uh, close to 30 percent. This year is about 33.2 percent. And also use of electronic money. We are forecasting growth going about uh, 32.3% uh, uh, also digital banking more and more people are using digital economy and finance for uh, for economic uh, and financial activities i think this is uh, mashallah this is uh, one of the lessons that we learned from the upon the pandemic more access to more use of digital better the economic and finance and i do believe this also need to be to be introduced and to be accelerated in, in the development of the Sharia economic and finance let me turn to the second aspect of the role of central bank and other agency next slide please for the Sharia economic and finance the prospect and policy direction next slide I think after, uh, uh, you know, over the past three and uh, years, uh, the role of Sharia economy and finance are flourishing globally and also in Indonesia. I think uh, according to the, you know, uh, uh, global Islamic economic effort, I think Indonesia, uh, in the role of the, uh, the role of uh, uh, Indonesia in Islamic economic uh, uh, finance becoming increasing. For example, uh, uh, the, 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 the share of uh, Indonesia total is about 11 percent, uh, mostly on the on the uh, halal food, uh, 13 percent, but also the fashion. Uh, fashion, I think, is also becoming closing to support our uh, our uh, economic uh, recovery. This is uh, a part. Next slide. Uh, the strategy with National Committee of Sharia Economic and Finance uh, Development. Uh, the important of this three prong strategy. Next slide uh, is uh, need to be underscored because in the past uh, we, we 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 used to focus on the Sharia finance, but Sharia finance with 
the banking or non banking cannot flourish without developing the Syria uh, economy. This is the economy of Ummah. Uh, economy of Ummah need to be support to be developed uh, to uh, you know to empower the the, the Ummah, but also to support the economic recovery as well as to uh, to uh, deepen also the Syria sector. This is the role uh, both commercial finance and uh, social finance need uh, uh, strengthen and uh, being central uh, be, being 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 strengthened. And this this is where the university uh, you know uh, can play a greater uh, role to develop uh, to have uh, you know uh, entrepreneurship uh, research uh, training uh, to support the both the uh, economy and finance because this is this is uh, this is where uh, the macroeconomy impact microeconomy impact and social impact can be much more accelerated uh, the, the 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 important of the Comprehensive is also to build the ecosystem. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we uh, we are we are adopting a uh, integrated ecosystem both on the Syria economy and finance. Uh, on this chart, uh, not only the creating the supply of the economy and finance, but also increasing the demand from the supply. Of course, uh, uh, we need to uh, under the first pillar. We need to develop the halal value chains. What we mean halal value chain? Of course, to uh, to build the ecosystem of uh, Syria or Islamic economic, whether uh, community based or uh, under pesantren, uh, you know, uh, majlis majlis, uh, mosque and Islamic boarding and so on. I think uh, Gontor is one of the role model that we are pride uh, that not only developing of the education, research and uh, training, which is excellent, but also uh, take a leading role in developing the Islamic economy. You know, I think I'm being there. I admire how uh, the business uh, uh, unit and the uh, and complex is being is being one of the, ex the good example for other uh, building. I think uh, community based Islamic economics uh, development is very important, uh, and that need to be integrated uh, to 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 uh, provide the ecosystem to the industry. We are focusing uh, on 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 uh, on fishing on the food. Uh, as well as on other uh, uh, other uh, you know, uh, sector and also end-to-end uh, -end process with uh, medium and large industry to build the ecosystem. Uh, we are already, uh, you know, uh, 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 pesantren for example, we already forming uh, Himbunan Business Pesantren, Happy Trend, which is a collaboration among pesantren economic unit to become larger as ecosystem. We also uh, linking those uh, economic uh, uh, development uh, based on the community with the uh, industry, with the tourism, uh, ha food, uh, fishing, and so on. And by the way, uh, ha food, uh, my, my apology, fashion, uh, Muslim fashion of Indonesia, now SME, now is becoming one of the favorite, uh, you know, fashion, uh, including in Malaysia and other countries, because oh, 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 so, uh, many of our SME already in the marketplace and uh, growing number of demand coming from overseas uh, and that will also in the left hand side to uh, to 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 building a commercial finance with uh, uh, you know from bank as well as social uh, finance uh, the government already succeeding in, in merging the three uh, largest uh, 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 state owned uh, you know Asaria uh, banking into one uh, large uh, uh, Indonesia Sharia uh, banking that being inaugurated president uh, about a few weeks ago. This is also testimony how serious uh, we develop the, the, the finance sector, including the banking. But the uh, finance, Islamic finance or need also to mobilize the social finance. Uh, whether a cash uh, wakaf, I think gerakan wakaf tune, uh, I think is one of the uh, one of the uh, program that being uh, introduced by the government as well as uh, zakat and the walk-off i'm i'm, I'm very uh uh you know 
where it plays uh, and the 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 the, the uh, 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 Gontor uh, Islamic boarding of pondok pesantren uh, becoming the center of international uh, akap studies. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, we 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 need to, to continue. Uh, you know, uh, 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 last year the, because of the pandemic, you know, uh, some of the program uh, need to be postponed. But uh, insya Allah, uh, this, uh, when the pandemic uh, a bit, uh, you know, uh, subsiding, we need to uh, again, uh, uh, you know. Uh, push and boost uh, the the zakat principle as well as a uh, wakaf we need uh, uh, more and more enterprises in managing the wakaf not only from the uh, sharia uh, principle but also in the management of the finance project and so on this the the the, the integrated uh, uh, program that we we, we 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 do together with the government university and and others next the center bank uh, also not only uh, 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 joining the national effort but internally we also reform our way of monetary and macro to be uh, you know uh, to be consistent with the Sharia principle in monetary policy uh, we already reform reform our monetary operation uh, we already introduced Sukuk Bank Indonesia as Sharia monetary instrument as well as we introduce uh, uh, monetary instrument the Sharia reserve requirement and macro we also uh, issue Sharia financing to uh, value ratio Sharia under cyclical buffer, area macro budgetary intermediation ratio, as well as uh, other uh, other macro budgetary instruments. So uh, the central bank uh, of Bank Indonesia already uh, reformed our way of central banking, both on monetary and macro budgetary, to be consistent with the uh, area principle. But beyond that, we already uh, you know uh, moving forward to have a central bank policy make on monetary and macro budgetary to be consistent with the uh, uh, area principle. Uh, next slide, uh, and, 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 and this is uh, uh, my, my, my last slide, which is Central Bank of Indonesia is very uh, active and also uh, in the, in the for, forefront to, uh, you know, to, to enhance, to accelerate uh, the communication, the campaign uh, of uh, halal uh, economic and finance through uh, our joint effort fought with university including uh, Gontor, Darussalam uh, and other university to uh, to introduce a curriculum which is uh, you know, uh, mixing between area principle theory but also uh, entrepreneurship but beyond that we are campaigning uh, every year uh, you know we are, we are organizing Indonesia Saria Economy Festival last year was the, the uh, success of the seven uh, uh, festival uh, globally, uh, we are we are we are we are proud of that. We also organizing uh, Saria festival in three area, three region: Sumatra, Jawa, uh, as well as uh, uh, East Part. And every of our uh, festival, uh, we invite everybody, including Gontor and others, business, government, uh, banking, uh, you know, pondok uh, pesantren. Uh, use this platform to act together, to work together, and to strengthen our silaturahim together to support and to expand Islamic economic environment in Insaullah. That will be flourishing in Indonesia. Indonesia will be one of the global player. Insallah will be uh, benefited for greater Ummah and Insallah. Uh, 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 under uh, rahmat and barakah dari Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I will stop it uh, here uh, brother Taufik uh, and, and I glad uh, if there is some you know, follow up question and that may arise thank you, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh please give a round of applause to a very interesting presentation from Mr. Perry Ward your PhD, thank you so much for the explanation and I'd like uh, to highlight several points that currently we have seen economic recovery globally and especially in Indonesia as well in the other country like US, China and other country. And thank you uh, Mr. Perry Wardio for um, your appreciation to Gontor and you mentioned just now that 
Gondor has been one of the center of international work of studies and also uh, community-based Islamic economics development because Gondor has been a role model in developing Islamic economics. And I also, um, I'd like to also highlight that uh, the governor of Bank Indonesia has highlighted that the, the development of Islamic finance will not be possible without the development of Islamic economics. Thank you so much again for the presentation and inter inter interesting enlightenment to the, uh, the current outlook of our economy. So I'd like to invite uh, the audiences to, oh, mashallah, we have a question here from Professor Amal. We'll, we'll ask a question. Yes, thank you. I want to ask just one question. Uh, very, what is your prediction about recovery of Indonesian economy? According to your opinion and according to your experience. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Ramo, for the question. Uh, I think I would like to invite uh, Papa Perry to directly answer His Excellency's questions. Uh, was the question audible? Uh, excuse me, uh, I think the, the Zoom account was muted. Uh, But Perry, is, is it, uh, can you hear us? I think the Zoom, uh, is that in the, the host? Could you please? Yes. Ah, okay. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm okay, uh, Brother Tafik. Thank you. Yes, I, 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 I hear you, but uh, your, your voice is a bit, you know, uh, uh, your voice is, uh, you know. Uh, Was the question clear? The question from Professor Amal, was it clear? Uh, if it is not really clear, uh, I think we can ask him to re repeat the questions. Was the sound uh, clear? I will repeat His Excellency's question. So according to... Uh, your voice is not clear, uh, Brother Taufik. Oh, okay. Let me. Uh, is it clear now? Check one, two, three. Is it clear now? I think I think uh, the connection in your your part, brother. Oh, hopefully <laughs> everything will get better soon. Uh, so I think I will try. We hear you clearly, and we can see you clearly. And I will repeat the question. Still, still not clear. Oh. I will uh, move to the laptop. Uh, 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 brother, uh, uh, you, you can you can raise the question from chat. I can I, I can read the, the chat. Okay, I will write the question in the chat. I will move to the the laptop. I will write it. Yes.
Excuse me, uh, Baba Perry, I have just typed quickly <laughs> to summarize the question from Professor Amal. So he's asking the question about your forecast regarding the economics recovery of Indonesia. I think to make it, uh, to elaborate the question, he's asking like when we will really uh, recover from the uh, economic, the, say, economic situation caused by pandemic, and how will it be possible for us to recover from the situation caused by pandemic? Excuse me, Dr. Perry. Uh, thank you, Brother yes. uh, Taufik, for the for the question, and uh, thank you, Professor Amal, for the question. Uh, uh, let me uh, answer uh, if I can understand the question uh, correctly. We are we are as I said, we are uh, forecasting our uh, economic uh, recovery already uh, underway and uh, we are seeing uh, this uh, this year our economic growth will be uh, about 4.3 to 5.3 percent which is uh, the point the center point is 4.8 uh, percent after last year a contraction of about uh, minus uh, two uh, percent uh, where is the economic growth is coming uh, from export Indonesian export has been quite good uh, to uh, China, ASEAN 5, US, I think, uh, yeah, uh, not only commodity, uh, commodity, primary commodity, but also manufacturing, already been good. And we see uh, uh, not only uh, outside Java, uh, CPO, coal, tin, copper, steel, and so on, but also Java. Uh, some of the uh, East Java uh, export is good. I think that, that support and including also from the uh, stimulus from the fiscal for co consumption as well as uh, you know from the investment I think uh, that will support our economic uh, recovery for this uh, year I think we are positive uh, Indonesia economic recovery is uh, continuing uh, and if I may, uh, if I may, uh, brother uh, Taufik, there is also some question in the chat uh, room. Uh, if I uh, yes. can be uh, uh, have your permission to yes, answer please. some of the question uh, in the uh, chat uh, room. Yes, please. there is a question from brother uh, Sahrul Sarif uh, from uh, Makassar about uh, about uh, rupiah uh, and the use of uh, dirham uh, dinar and and so on uh, we already communicate announced to the public uh, remember that every country have the currency their own dinar uh, is, uh, and dirham are being used in a, a number of uh, countries my recollection uh, dinar uh, being used uh, in uh, you know uh, in uh, United uh, Arab, for example, I uh, mistaken, but also in Iraq and uh, some of the uh, uh, African as well as uh, Dirham being used in Kuwait and so on. So every country has a constitution uh, what the currency being used in Indonesia. Under the constitution, the, 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 uh, the currency is rubia. Rupiah is under the consistent be only currency being used in Indonesia. This is under the constitution. And uh, the, uh, from the constitution, there is also a uh, law on uh, undang, undang mata uang. I think that, that also Rupiah is the only uh, currency for uh, medium of uh, payment uh, in, in Indonesia. I think that's, uh, that's uh, number one. With that, then the use of any currency in Indonesia other than rupiah is not consistent is against the law of the constitution and as well as uh, and the uh, undang undang mata uh, uang i think that's uh, that's uh, number uh, number 1 and uh, please do not uh, confuse this with the use of electronic money uh, and other remember 
If you use electronic money using QR Indonesian standard, if you use a debit card, ATM card, a credit card, they use still use rupiah. You know, electronic money, you know, wallet, you know, QR Indonesian standard, all of them are using rupiah. So once again, please do not confuse uh, uh, with the digital uh, digital money. Digital money, uh, like uh, electronic money and so on, all of them are rupiah. That's, yeah, principle under the constitution, under the, the law, rupiah is the only currency being used in Indonesia and other currency is uh, 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 cannot be used and there is also uh, uh, stipulation about the sanction of people using uh, uh, currency other than rupiah in Indonesia. I think that's uh, my uh, my answer to Brother Sahrul uh, uh, on the chat uh, room. Uh, there is also uh, a question of the uh, forecasting of succession and I already uh, already answered about uh, our forecast of economic growth this year economic recovery 4.3 to 4.8 percent the center is uh, uh, my apology 4.3 to 5.3 uh, uh, percent the center is 4.8 uh, percent uh, there is also other uh, question about uh, uh, you know uh, 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 what is the, the, the planning of Bank Indonesia to support the economy of the Pesantren? Uh, we continue increasing uh, the number of Pesantren that we uh, have also uh, under our program, uh, we call it Program Pemberdayaan Ekonomi uh, Pesantren. Uh, every, uh, every, every year the number are uh, increasing. Uh, not only through our uh, head office but also through our 46 branches around the country so uh, bank indonesia branches focusing also uh, developing uh, economic of pesantren uh, throughout the, the country and not only developing the economic pesantren but also connecting one pesantren to other pesantren to have an uh, ecosystem uh, you know including last year we we jointly uh, co uh, co uh, cooperation uh, of uh, you know uh, uh, institution uh, herbitren Himbunan uh, Business Economy uh, Pesantren. Of course, uh, Bank Indonesia is not alone. Uh, we are also uh, working together with uh, central government and local government uh, on developing economic uh, pesantren, including also state-owned enterprises, uh, ministries. Uh, they also uh, jointly uh, developing the, the the pesantren. And we also also we are working with uh, OJK for the Saria Finance, including uh, how to connect our economic of a sun trend with, with bank wakab uh, micro that's why we also supporting uh, mobilization of cash uh, wakab uh, to be also a uh, productive uh, uh, you know, uh, financing for uh, SSA for uh, development uh, of uh, SME I think that's uh, that's our uh, our uh, our uh, uh, development and also there is also other uh, other uh, question uh, on uh, from uh, Pak Asep Maulana from uh, UNE Airlangga University uh, about uh, you know uh, about uh, 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 let me see uh, I I cannot answer the I I cannot uh, grab the, the the question on this. Uh, the second question is about the economic growth flow uh, down to the, the time uh, as well as uh, how the bank uh, bank uh, lending to the, the, the credit. Uh, uh, you know, Pak Asep, uh, remember what we are facing here is very different than what we faced in the past because the epicentrum uh, of what we are facing now is COVID-19 pandemic where uh, because of COVID-19 pandemic uh, you know threatening our lives our health and, and so on uh, that's uh, making a mobility of the people becoming limited that's why uh, impacted our economic our business our SME and also impacting the banking so that's why uh, to address to solve the problem that's why I was saying and this is uh, in close cooperation with the government vaccination and 
discipline of protocol COVID is a must because those uh, to address the epicentrum of the uh, what we are facing uh, right now. Uh, so, uh, you know, the health, the humanity can be addressed through uh, protocol uh, COVID-19 uh, discipline, uh, you know, uh, 3M, you know, uh, using mask, uh, wash our hand, uh, distancing, and, and, and so on, uh, also vaccination that the government is doing, so the mobility of people can be increased, economic activity can increase, then the financing of the banking can also the increase. But at the same time, we also addressing from the policy side, uh, more fiscal stimulus from the government, uh, more stimulus from monetary and macro financial from central bank, as well as from OJK supporting the bank for financing. This is concerted effort. We have been meeting not only with the government but also with the bank and the business sector to jointly uh, support this uh, economic. So, so this is uh, more integrated jointly uh, cooperation uh, uh, among related uh, agency to, 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 to support the economic uh, recovery and inshallah uh, this year 2021 our economic condition uh, will be uh, growing uh, better than uh, then uh, last uh, yeah, last year through through this uh, joint uh, effort, uh, I think I think uh, I'm I'm I'm, I'm uh, about uh, there is a uh, there is also one uh, a question about uh, you know this the disaster uh, you know uh, fund uh, Bank Indonesia is also have a GSR corporate uh, social responsibility. We are also mobilizing our corporate social responsibility to help our brother and sister and uh, other of the region, including West uh, Sulawesi as well as uh, East Kalimantan and other area that, that, that uh, facing uh, facing uh, you know uh, disaster. But also beyond that, using our GSR uh, corporate social responsibility, we also uh, helping uh, community, including Pondok Pesantren, uh, to 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 cope with the uh, COVID-19 uh, throughout the, 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 the country. I think that's uh, uh, that's uh, 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 that's that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, uh, some of the questions of Brother Taufik that I can, I can read from the chat uh, room. Uh, back to you, br Mashallah. Brother Taufik. Mashallah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bapak Perry Wadjo for your explanation and Ashley, your explanation also inspire us and I, if I want to like summarize in just one very short word, I would like to take to quote your sentence just now, a concerting effort. So it has to be the thing that we need to work together. So both government and also the community has worked together to solve the problems that we are currently facing. And inshallah, with again what you mentioned just now, with our optimism and discipline, Inshallah, together we can go through this situation. And inshallah, in the near future, we are not only surviving from this situation, but inshallah, Indonesia will get some kind of momentum to be the leader in Islamic economics and also in economic as a whole, inshallah. So, uh, again, thank you so much, Bapak Periwarjo, for the explanation, the keynote speech, and followed by Q&A. Um, we understand it's a, it's a very, a very rare uh, occasion that we can have a direct Q&A with your Excellency and today we are really honored to have this opportunity uh, and we hope in the near future we can always again have another conversation with your Excellency. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, all participants in uh, Gontor and in Zoom, we are in the end of our program today and we are really happy for your participation in this program and again i'd like to extend our greatest uh, our greatest gratitude to <coughs> both distinguished speak speaker professor Iswandi Jaswir and Bapa Peri Wardjo PhD for amazing talk and amazing opportunity to have a discussion with all of you and uh, before we close, we'd like to have a photo session in Zoom. <laughs> so for the participant in Zoom, if you are currently able to turn on your camera, so please turn on your camera for a short photo session in virtual. Uh, okay. So I will start in a couple of moments. I understand maybe some people prefer not to show uh, their faces, but it's fine. Okay, so now we are going to take photos for uh, for a short time. 
Okay, we're, uh, operator, please be ready to take photos. I'll count to three. One, two, three. Okay, another one. One, two, three. Okay, Alhamdulillah. And uh, on behalf of the President and Director of University of Darussalam Kotor, we'd like to thank everyone who is to contribute to the successful of today's webinar, especially to our two distinguished speakers. And before we close, let's recite a dua kafaratul majlis. Subhanakallahumma wa bihandika, ashadu alla ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Let's cross by reciting Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you and I beg pardon for any shortcomings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Terima kasih, Bapak Peri. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Masya Terima kasih, Pak Taufik. Sama-sama, terima kasih. Michelle, we'll see you again in the next Terima kasih, Pak Taufik. Uh, salam hormat, Prof. Amal. Insyaallah. Bapak-bapak semuanya dari Gontor. Insyaallah, kami sampaikan. Prof. Irwandi, jika masih di sini, kami ucapkan selalu. terima kasih. Prof. Irwandi, semoga bisa ada kesempatan lagi. Thank you so much for your uh, participation and for the speech, inspiring speech today's agenda. Thank you. Kami akan tutup semuanya, Bapak, mohon izin. Silakan untuk operator bisa ditutup. Terima kasih semua partisipan. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Okay. Silakan untuk operator bisa di close. Di lift. You can click lift. Tadi anak handle keren, gak ada yang doa. Ah, I have close already. You should give me. You should give me information. Yes. Okay, anyway. So I close just now because I don't, I don't know who is going to pray. And I ask you, chat. Anyways, good. Okay, thank you everyone. Assalamualaikum.